assume that people watch my channel because I have different content, a different mindset uh, when it comes to AI and certain things than a lot of other people. Uh, and that's uh, exactly true, right? That's that's how I go about these things. And within that, uh, every once in a while, every once in a while, I, I come up with something that is like, okay, no one else is probably going to come up with this for a long time. And uh, let me showcase this. And, and this is actually super duper cool. Oh, my gosh. And here we are today. So yesterday I read this article, Water Tweezers, new technique generates topological structures with gravity waves. And I've been thinking about this article since, right? This article is very simple and very, I mean, straightforward from a physics perspective. It deals with topological structures and in this instance, water, and then it's water dynamics, right? And then, so this article has nothing to do with uh, what we're going to look at, but it's what got me onto this. So in this, like water tweezers in this instance are a brand new topological structure created via water structures. It creates like water shadows and Mobius strips and like all kinds of mathematical cool concepts that come out of this water tweezers concept, right? But but to me, the bottom line that I hone in on with this water tweezers concept is that they're proving that a wave exists within nature that is not a Fourier wave. And that has been like big on my mind, like personally for a few months now. Like I've been like kind of like on a mission behind the scenes to try to prove that these models are utilizing and shaping a topological structure that is a wave-based structure that is a non-Fourier wave-based structure. That's been my hypothesis all along. And like a lot of people, even like people that are high up in, in uh, the field, poo-poo on that specifically. Right, that it's a non Fourier wave that they're uh, that they're like uh, playing around with, right? Because it's like, well, like, what would a non Fourier wave look like? We don't have an example of one. Here you go. Here's water tweezers, right? Here's an example of a non Fourier wave in action. Okay, so then step two, then, right? Like this, like, uh, so, like my hypothesis uh, is correct. Then what would this theoretical? Uh, fluid dynamic neural network look like? Like, how would it actually work? And then, so I've thought through that, friends, and, and here we go. So uh, my hypothesis at the moment and within this experimentation is, is that AI systems, the way that they learn, and they learn like a fluid dynamic system. They unknowingly are governed by the laws of fluid dynamics. And it is fluid dynamics that influences all of this. And what they are doing is they are treating a fluid like a shape. In this instance, the fluid is entropy. And the 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 um, jar is the, the neural network, the latent space. So latent space is a jar for a fluid, which is entropy, which is what the models utilize to learn. Sounds way out there, right, man? This is crazy talk. Uh, let me prove it to you right now. Uh, so this code is a special type of artificial intelligence model that learns how to recognize handwritten digits like those on the MNIST data set, but instead of working like a traditional AI, this model we're going to look at is a fluid system. This is a fluid dynamic neural network. 100% uh, MIT license, by the way. I'll get into that. So what does this AI do? This AI processes images of handwritten digits, uh, like fives and sevens, etc., and it uses a fluid-like approach to learn. Instead of learning a traditional way, like a standard neural network, it doesn't utilize uh, weights. It simulates a fluid movement inside of each layer of the AI model. Information flows like waves, spreading and interacting as if it were a liquid. It then makes predictions. After processing the image, the AI predicts which number it represents. It then adjusts itself to improve accuracy and getting better over time. I haven't maxed out the accuracy of this model. I don't know where it maxes at. I'll show you that. Breaking down the components. The fluid layer. How the AI learns like a fluid. In a normal AI, layers process information using fixed numbers. Here, each layer acts like a liquid surface, allowing information to flow inside of it. The AI updates this fluid over multiple steps, simulating waves, pressure, and movement. Key concepts in this layer. Diffusion. Controls how information spreads across the fluid. Viscosity. Reduces chaotic movement, ensuring stability. 
time steps. Instead of instant updates, the AI refines itself over time like ripples in water. The fluid network, multiple layers of fluid. The AI is built using three layers of this fluid-like structure. Each layer refines this information gradually, making it more precise. The final layer extracts a decision, which digit the AI sees. Very simplistically, like I want to note this, this is a super simple neural network, right? This is a three-layer neural network, which is, I mean, like that's as simple as you can get. Training the AI, how it learns. The AI is trained on thousands of examples of handwritten digits. It repeatedly makes guesses and compares them to correct answers. Each time it gets a wrong answer, it adjusts how information flows through its fluid layers. And I run tests on it, uh, which we'll see here. Um, and then so traditional AI models use rigid numbers and fixed weights to process information. This AI behaves dynamically like a fluid, allowing it to adapt better to new information, process data more smoothly, and potentially improve over traditional AI in recognizing patterns. This is one of, if not the first, AI model designed explicitly to behave like a fluid system, and it opens the door to new ways of thinking about how intelligence works. Let's check out the model itself, right? First step, I wanted to see, like, can I actually do this? What's What would a fluid layer look like? <laughs> so that's what I do here. Very first step is I build a fluid layer, right? Um, so I essentially construct it out. Um, initially, I have a pr my pressure and my viscosity fields that act as my like uh, they were as my replacement for parameters. I had to do uh, a bunch of adjustments like all throughout this. This was hard, right? Like I I, <clears throat> I had to adjust this code a lot and refine this code a lot. Uh, I've never tried to create a. Uh, neural network as a fluid before and then have the neural network itself be the container for that fluid and then so you like uh i run into some soft errors here you know and and, and some things like okay i i'm it's not actually getting a learning rate and i i'm implementing the softmax backwards in my first instance to software which is okay that's fine right um but and then this nan is especially fine to me uh because it's like okay uh that's like not like uh, let me try to fix that but i don't like i'm gonna come back to that and i don't think i actually need to fix it but let me first do that so that's what i try to do is, is fix the nan error right um so uh, essentially i go through and then i build this out a bit more just like overall like what uh makes me think and, and and like i like I, and like i knew that this experimentation would go somewhere up front is like i've been experimenting in weird ways with diffusion for like a few years now <laughs> and uh i've kind of i've like i've come close to this experimentation with with uh, diffusion before but i never like thought it all the way through um and then so this model is is like it's a, a mixture of diffusion and a uh, uh, standard neural network, right? It's it's got your atom optimizer. I, I build out at this point like the the full neural network, gradient clipping, gradient descent, everything that you would have within a neural network. But like uh, the the liquid layer is like uh, modified diffusion, right? Um, and then the so I, I run through this and then I, I go through and then this is my first attempt on it. And surprisingly, it works, right? And then so um, I'm getting this, and then I get this, like, uh, I get um, a fixed loss. I, I fixed my loss, but loss is kind of weird. But then I can see that it is outputting data, right? And then loss is kind of weird in my, like, I expect loss to be weird. This is a fluid neural network, right? Um, and then again, I'm, I'm hitting that softmax backward error. So uh, let me fix that. So step three here, what is running here? And what has been running in this uh, this uh, instance for the last 45 minutes uh, is this updated model, right? So this is the like the, the fully complete model. You can see here I've got uh, it all tweaked out. So I've, uh, it essentially operates off of diffusion, viscosity, and time steps. And I combine all of those uh, within each individual layer uh, and then go through <laughs> more structure uh, overall for kind of how each layer works. It's a feed forward network. Work, uh, which a lot of people will like, um, and then so uh, go through, and then um, essentially as it's training right now, right, and then so uh, this is going through, and I want to highlight this that uh, it trains and then it it, it improves in like a ten percent increments. So every single like uh, training step that I do, it's been improving ten percent. So zero, eleven, twenty one, thirty two, forty three. I ran this the first time for like an hour and a half, and I didn't expect it to run that long, and I had to walk away. Right? Uh, and I, like, it was at like uh, 68%. Uh, and then I was like, oh man, like it, it crashed. And then, and then, so that's why I'm doing it again, like, because uh, I wasn't expecting it to take like a, I wasn't expecting to go through this experimentation for like this long and for this period of time. And then I wasn't expecting it to 
keep improving 10% every time after like an hour and a half. So I'm going to run this longer and longer, right? But you can see it, 0, 11, 21, 32, 43. Uh, and then, so, I mean, it's every single time 10 to 11% is what it's improving. And then up to the, uh, I can contest that up to 68% at least, that's not going to go down. And that's not going to show any signs of, of decreasing or going up. Uh, not through that pattern. So there's a chance that we, I mean, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll update uh, if this gets up to 100% accuracy. I don't expect it to get like 100% accuracy across the board, right? Uh, but uh, it's interesting, uh, this model keeps learning and it keeps, le the the learning rate is is good, <laughs> excellent. And and uh, I mean, this is the, the first iteration of it, right? I don't know what, I, I, I'm a noob. <laughs> no one's ever done this, right? I don't know what a fluid dynamic neural network looks like. Uh, but so uh, in case you want to find out, like this is 100% MIT license, uh, fluid dynamic neural network, here you go. Uh, I, I uploaded it to my GitHub immediately, uh, released under full MIT license. Here's exactly how it works, fluid-based computation, entropy-driven learning, improves to build, uh, and then uh, no back propagation, uh, and there you go. That's a, the essence of the model. So it's got a lot of elements that I think a lot of people will like. Uh, hopefully, like there's someone that's like really into fluid dynamic physics and, and that's gonna like see this and, and, and take this to the next level and go crazy with it, right? Because like I, I this is as simple of an implementation as you can get. I'm shocked that it works and it works good. <laughs> like uh, AI is a fluid dynamic system. Prove me wrong. If you, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.